Madam President, uh, I rise for a second to talk about the financial services bill. I do want to say something in advance of that, though, and I'm sorry Chairman Dodd is not on the floor. Uh, this Friday is the last day Americans can go under contract on the first time home buyer tax credit and the move up tax credit. Uh, I had the privilege of working with the banking chairman on that legislation in the fall of last year and its extension. And I, I've, I felt a sense of reward today when the announcement came out that for the first time in 36 months, homes in the 20 test markets in the United States values actually went up by six tenths of one percent. That's not a lot of money, but it's the first time in 36 months. And the chairman created an environment to allow that debate to take place. And this Senate voted 100 to nothing uh, to pass it, and the American people have benefited from it. As I tell so many who call me, it's not going to be extended because credits like that are designed to do what it has done. That is bring the marketplace back, hopefully stabilize values, and move forward. But I do want to talk about the finance, and I commend Senator Dodd for setting an environment where that could take place, which brings me to my point on the bill before us. Uh, Senator Feinstein did an excellent job of talking about Wall Street and some other people that certainly need to be held accountable where there wasn't any transparency, contributors to the problem, and the difficult problem that derivatives caused in the whole mess. But there's another story out there I want to bring up because when we do get to debate on this bill, when we get to a point, it's my hope we really are going to have a debate and an amendment process because there's some things that aren't in this 1,407-page bill that really ought to be. And what I specifically want to talk about is Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, Moody's, and Standard & Poor's. You know, when the market began to collapse, a lot of those derivatives that were talked about were bets one way or another against the housing market, which in many ways had been overheated in America because of the approval of something known as a subprime mortgage. But the devil in those details that caused us so much problem there originally was no market for subprime mortgages. They were, a, they were B, C, and D credits. They were down payment assistance loans. They were higher risk loans by their definition, but they got securitized. And two things happened. First, Moody's and Standards rated them as investment grade, triple A investment grade bond uh, securities. Secondly, Freddie and Fannie, at the behest of the United States government and its Congress, us, started buying those securities to meet the desire to have more affordable housing in America. A noble goal, but a goal that was being achieved by loaning people money that could not pay it back, by loaning them the down payment they didn't have, by not validating the credit, their employment, or anything else. And so when this thing really did collapse, when everything went down and went down fast. It was in large measure because Freddie and Fannie created the marketplace that started the buying of these securities around the world, these mortgage securities, number one. And equal with that is Moody's and Standard rate them investment grade when they obviously were not. Now, I would think that as we move towards a debate on this bill when that time comes, and it would come, that it would be a bill that included Freddie and Fannie, and included Moody's and Standards. And I do understand there, is, there are some references to Moody's and Standards, but I would submit to you the best accountability on Moody's and Standards is for them to be paid by the purchaser of securities, not the creator of them. Because then they're accountable to the people who actually get stuck holding the bag, not to the guy who created them and dumped and run, which is some of the stuff that Ms. Fein uh, Senator Feinstein was talking about. I also want to talk about the quality of lending. You know, there, there are provisions in this bill to talk about shared risk and risk retention. There are provisions for a mortgage banker to retain 5% of the risk in a loan. That's a well-intended move, but as I said the other day on the floor and as I reminded people in this body, when the savings and loan collapsed, when the RTC, the Resolution Trust, was created, when that crisis cost the American people three quarters of a trillion dollars, savings and loans in America didn't have 5% of the risk. They had 100% of the risk. They made those loans with deposits that they had of their depositors, and they were paid back over time. But when we took away their preference for deposits on $10,000 or less against the banking industry, 
And when because they began losing money, we allowed them to form service corporations and get into businesses they didn't know anything about, they finally collapsed and imploded with 100% risk, not just 5%. So I would submit that another thing that needs to be incorporated in this is for us to put some underwriting standards, minimum standards, so that anything that doesn't meet them has to be an insured mortgage by an MGIC or a PMI. We ought to go back to the good old days of the 1960s, 70s, and 80s where you had to have a job and a verification to borrow money, where you had to get a credit report, where you didn't have a windshield appraisal where an appraiser drove by on the street, but you had a legitimate appraisal where they evaluated property, where you couldn't borrow money that would cause you to spend more than 25 or 30 percent on your monthly payment as a percentage of your gross income, or a total of 38 percent on all debts you had, including that payment of at least a year or more in duration. The real estate industry, the housing industry, America, with those very standards, which were the standards of the 60s, 70s, and part of the 80s, ended up having a vibrant housing market. 65% home ownership, the largest of any company in the world. But when the, the, the idea of Wall Street to get greedy, when our idea of forcing Freddie and Fannie to be purchasers of resort, uh, when all those things became created, the rush came to make the mortgage, to sell the paper, to produce the income, that the investor wanted, the quality of the house, the qualification of the buyer, the legitimacy of the loan came in question. So I look forward to a point in time when we get to this debate that we'll talk about three things. Number one is that Freddie, and Freddie, May and Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae were in fact government-sponsored institutions and today are a lot more government-sponsored than they ever were. Secondly, if we exempt them, they, we, we leave the potential and the temptation for them to be used as a dictated purchaser of certain kinds of paper that get us right back in the same problem again. And if Moody's and Standards do not have an accountability to their rating standards when something happens like the subprime loans, then we are leaving open the opportunity for most of what happened that was the principal cause of the collapse to happen again. And I think we have a responsibility not to do that. And I hope to become a part of a debate on that part of this legislation that closes the loophole, that takes away this idea if you just have 5% shared risk, it's a safe loan, and instead make sure the underwriting to the borrower is what we count on, because after all, that's going to have to be how the money's paid back. We know for a fact that Freddie and Fannie were a major part of the problem. And we know that lack of quality underwriting was a major contributor to the quality of insecurity. Somewhere it ought to be addressed, but in these 1,407 pages, to the best of my reading and looking, it is not. That is unfortunate, and it's a mistake, and I hope when we get to the final debate, we'll correct that error, or else we will not have addressed a major contributor to the problem to our taxpayers and our voters and our citizens. And with that, I yield back the floor. Mr. President. Senator Madam from, President, pardon Senator me. From Delaware.